I think it's the best pulse rifle in the game. As a pulse rifle enthusiast, as a pulse rifle main, when I saw the perk pool for the first time, I was very, very surprised by what they were putting on it. I had some question marks about Desperate Measures. I was excited to see Headseeker, Desperado, and Kill Clip all at the same time. I was also curious about destabilizing rounds, sure. But the combination of everything, the stat package, the perk selection, the variety of experiences that this gun offers you, and all of them, all of them are actually very, very good. It really redefines the idea that this archetype high impact pulse rifles are only for pvp by far and away the biggest standout if we just put this as a compare i'm going to also get messenger here because messenger is widely thought of as the best pulse rifle in the game it's a statistical anomaly lc's rifle 33 impact same range is a little bit higher in messenger we have this roughly the same stability we have way better handling 42 versus 31 reload speed 60 versus 38 aim assistance a little bit higher 40 versus 38 zoom okay a little bit better on messenger airborne effectiveness 24 versus 20 and then recoil direction is 73 versus 60. Elsie's rifle statistically i feel has the messenger beat and the messenger is widely considered to be the best one of the best if not the best pvp pulse rifle but here's the rub i think that Elsie's rifle is a very good pve primary as well now obviously wait for pulse rifle season or avoid season or both. If there is a Pulse Rifle Champion mod, this should shoot to the top of your list. 340 Pulses were one of the few archetypes that actually could hang in PvE because they do really good single bullet damage. They may not be the best in terms of a DPS perspective because of their rate of fire, but when you shot at something, it would die which is a very far cry from say lightweights or rapid fires as well. But obviously they are cumbersome, they're heavy. They would take too long to reload. Their handling was always poor. It was never a good idea to run them because you were committed to holding this truck of a rifle with the reload speed and the handling well above board the reload speed in particular being 60 almost double that of messenger this suddenly makes it very viable for general pve suddenly you have a very powerful feeling weapon in your hands that can get down and dirty with the ad clearing on this is an ad clear weapon like this is this is a volatile build with desperate measures going in full chat i don't even know what to say here I, this has completely blown my expectations out of the water ike was reviewing this weapon i was thinking this is going to be a pure pvp weapon absolutely no problem but once i started using it that reload it, it just comes down i just sorry for repeating myself but that reload speed and the handling just goes hard man <laughs> i don't know what to say it's so so good now let's let, let's have a look at some of these perks shall we let's stick with desperate measures because desperate measures are 30 percent damage buff it is ridiculous but don't discount desperado if you want to do something funny destabilizing rounds probably not a bad idea because what i as i understand it the power of destabilizing rounds is inher inherently linked to the power of your weapon and since 340s are quite quite powerful their their base damage is quite high destabilizing rounds tertiary secondary tertiary effects are also seem to be quite high as well that's just off personal observation that's the explanation that makes sense to me if you are a d2 scientist feel free to correct the shit out of me i'm just very very hyped about this frenzy is okay frenzy pretty good it will max out your handling and reload as we've talked about before but quite honestly it doesn't need it after we start specking into some of the other options here so desperate measures by far and away my favorite perk here because of the 30 percent damage buff if we're going to be leaning into ad clear we need to keep desperate measures we need to keep this gun reloaded as much as possible feeding frenzy is the obvious pick here however I'm going to advocate for rewind rounds as well. Rewind rounds will give you up to 60% of your magazine back. 60% of eight of 30 is 18. Then it has a potential to trigger again. It doesn't always work, but you have then effectively 48 bullets in the magazine before you have to reload. And that is more than enough to keep any train of destruction going. Like I said before, it can be a little bit hard to get used to, especially if you're trying to build up a rhythm when it comes to ad clearing. Feeding Frenzy would definitely be a better bet in that respect because you'll have X5 pretty much the entire time. But with Desperate Measures being 30%, you could also spec for Repulsor Brace, and you could get up close and personal and use it like an SMG or an auto. It's remarkable. The power in your hands, how quickly things just die, and you can't die as well, it's it's incredible. It's it, I don't know what to... I, I just, again, I'm flabbergasted by this weapon. I really am. In terms of your barrel and mag, 
really you could go with whatever, whatever you really want. For me, appended mag is definitely a good shout here. Flared magwell, definitely good for added stability and added reload speed. So appended mag, flared magwell will probably be my picks. I'd probably lean more towards flared magwell if I'm going to go with repulsor brace, for example. And then your barrels. The obvious choice here is arrowhead break gets you to a nice, handy 100 recoil direction. Also gives you a little boost to handling, which is always very, very welcome. Fluted barrel is also a nice option for added handling and stability. Makes a heavy weapon feel a little bit more crisp in frenetic ad clear situations. If you're going to go with either one, I'd probably recommend Fluted Barrel, and then I would probably stick on a counterbalance masterwork there. It keeps the recoil very, very manageable, and you will want to do something about that recoil because 73 recoil direction doesn't feel terribly good to begin with. Now, when it comes to PvP, my goodness. Well, it's just a 340. It's a 340 on, on steroids. It has no time to explain sight. It has very, very good competitive handling. And you have one of the best, if not the best PvP perk for all pulse rifles. Zen Moment, which used to be thought of as a controller thing, but it is very good mouse keyboard. Why? When you land your first shot with Zen Moment, you're gonna notice that the recoil suddenly becomes way more manageable. You don't need our head break because what happens with Zen Moment, it seems to boost your stability with respect to the recoil. The thing that governs recoil bounciness on pulse rifles is not recoil direction. That is simply the direction of the bounce. The, um, if you want to reduce the spread of those three bursts, you need to spec into stability. This has been a thing with pulse rifles for a long time. And Zen Moment gives you a huge boost to that stability. Now you can still get our head break and make sure that bounces perfectly vertical, absolutely. But quite honestly, I don't think you need it. Zen Moment is so strong at controlling that bounce that it allows you to, it frees up your barrel to do other things with this weapon. So for me, I'm gonna spec into Hammer Forge Rifling. I want this to have the most range possible, the most flexibility possible. I want this to dual 120 RPM hand cannons. Second column, ricochet rounds for add even more range and stability. Zen Moment is now taking care of my, my reticle issues. And then on the third column, we have, we are spoiled for choice. Kill Clip, because if you never experienced the 340 with Kill Clip, you're missing out. Not the first thing I would think to take into trials though, that honor goes to Headseeker. Headseeker just makes this thing feel very, very consistent. If you hit a body shot, you will get a boost to your aim assist and it will feel like you can't miss, even more so. It just becomes a very scary weapon to deal with. And of course we have Desperado. Desperado in its current form feels like one of the perks of all time, but it's still very good. It's still very capable and in sixes, I think it's still worth having a muck around with. It's just not as scary as it used to be. For me, it comes down to personal preference. I think I'm gonna be chasing a shiny that can do both Kill Clip and Headseeker. If I had to choose one role today, it would be Hammer Forge, Ricochet, Zen Moment, and Headseeker with possibly a Handling Masterwork just to get those stats up as much as I can. And I would slap a Counterbalance mod on that just for the recoil direction. So is Elsie's rifle any good? Well, it is staggeringly good. It is stunning to use. It is by far and away the best of the six that we have had released today. Uh, aside from Edge Transit, which is really funny being meta and all, but just from a personal gunplay enthusiast perspective, Elsie's is my favorite. And I think it is complete, it is, it is a pulse rifle lover's wet dream. And it has the power to surprise in PvE. It's a perfect gun. For me, it is potentially one of the best legendary weapons in the entire game. Like maybe top 10, definitely top 10, maybe top five. This one you have to go for. You absolutely have to go for, for both PvE and both PvP. And that's it. Hope you find this video useful and this helps you figure out what you want to grind for in Onslaught. Best of luck with getting your shinies and your rolls. Other than that, you can catch me in front of a live studio audience over at Twitch where we test these things live and we come up with our conclusions together and we go through the joys of discovery as a community. It's a fun time. You should absolutely come, come by and hang out. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Ascendant Nomad and I'll see you next week. Cheers.